This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and welcome to this edition of Destined for Victory. I'm your speaker and host, Pastor Paul Shepard, and I'm glad you've joined me because I believe you're going to receive fresh insight into God's Word. Listen, do me a favor, call someone who needs a word from the Lord and tell them to go to praisedc.com, click on Praise on Demand, and then choose Destined for Victory. Now, before we get into the broadcast, let me quickly mention that you can hear our daily broadcast 24 hours a day on my website, pastorpaul.net. On that website, you'll find a number of resources that will be a blessing to you or to someone you know. That's pastorpaul.net. I'll give you my complete contact information at the conclusion of the broadcast. But right now, let's get into this message entitled, It's Time to Testify. Listen and be blessed. How did Joseph testify? He testified in two ways. Because each time the Lord gave him these two children, he was expressing his testimony by naming them. Look with me at what he did. He named the first child Manasseh. The name Manasseh means causing to forget. Causing to forget. And in the text, Joseph gave us his explanation as to why he named his firstborn Manasseh. He says, it is because the Lord has caused me to forget all my trouble and my father's household. Now let's park. Let's pull over and park here. I don't want to zoom by Manasseh. There's some gold that we need to mine right there. He named this child Manasseh meaning causing to forget. And his explanation was, the Lord has so blessed me, the Lord has so touched my heart and touched my life until I no longer remember the trouble of all of my past and all of my father's household. Now, think about it. Why would he name this child Manasseh if he forgot? that he had trouble because the name means causes to forget. If the Lord gave him literal amnesia, he wouldn't remember that he had trouble. You don't call your kid, I forgot. (laughs) If you don't remember there was something to forget. You missed that, let me say that again. This boy was named causing to forget. God's caused me to forget all my trouble in my father's household. If he had literally forgotten, then he would never name the child I forgot. You wouldn't know there was something that you forgot. Are we all there? So the glory of this naming, the glory of this testimony is not that I literally forgot, I didn't. I know my brother's hated me. I know my brothers persecuted me. I know my brothers uh, betrayed me. I know my brothers did wrong by me. I know my brothers wanted to kill me. God just wouldn't let them do it. So they decided to sell me as a slave instead. I remember exactly what happened. I know what Mrs. Potiphar did. I remember all of my trouble, but God has so blessed me now with his grace and with his power until for all practical purposes, those things are now a non-issue for me. That's the glory of the testimony. The testimony means, yes, they did it, but I am not oppressively uh, put down by what they did. Yes, it happened, but I'm not carrying around anger and bitterness and hatred. I'm not carrying around a desire to get revenge on people because God has so lifted me out of the oppressive pain. God has shaken all of the stifling, paralyzing hurt that I've been through, and now it does doesn't matter what they did because look at where God has me now. He has lifted me up and lifted me out of what I've been going through and it just doesn't matter anymore. I'm here to let you know that's what God wants to do in our lives. God wants to bless you so that the painful things, the oppressive things, the betrayal, the abandonment, 
the lies told on you, the people who have done you wrong, the people who abused and mistreated you, the people who uh, were out to get you. God wants to bless your life so that those people and their acts are no longer an issue. God will so bless you until you are able to release all of that and it is a non-issue. And God intentionally doesn't want you to forget. See, a lot of times you see people say, well, we need to forgive and forget. The fact of the matter is this naming suggests no. God could have given Joseph amnesia had he wanted to. He could give you amnesia if he wanted to. He doesn't want to do that. You know why? Because how are you going to testify and you don't remember what happened? <laughs> Testimony service rolls around. Growth group says, anybody have a praise report? And you sitting there, nope. <laughs> why? Because you forgot. God doesn't want you to literally forget. He wants you to remember, yes, it happened. Yes, I was betrayed. Yes, I was lied on. Yes, I was mistreated. Yes, they abandoned me when I needed them most. But God has done such great things for me until for all practical purposes, I forgot how oppressively painful it was. I forgot how much I couldn't handle it. I forgot how angry and bitter I was. I forgot I left that place where all I wanted was revenge. This naming is a testimony that God has taken this man to such heights until for all practical purposes, what they did doesn't matter anymore. I'm here to let you know that's where some of us need to go. Some of us need to go to Manasseh. God wants to take you to that place where the things that happened in your past are only stepping stones, only components of a testimony that brings great glory to your God. See, here's what you got to understand. Until you get to that place, you have given all the power and all the glory to all the wrong people. As long as you're walking around saying, if it's the last thing I do, I'm gonna get all those jokers who have ever done me wrong. I'm gonna get all the people who mistreated me, who abused me, who lied on me, who abandoned me when I needed them, who didn't raise me right, who didn't do this by me, who didn't give me that job, who didn't give me that promotion. All of the people who were my detractors and working behind the scenes to try to undo me. All the I'm gonna get all of them. Some of us are carrying around an active list, a hit list. Now, I know that, listen, if you're going to get this, uh, if you're going to get this word, you're going to have to be real. I know we, we look impressive, got your big Bibles, everything. But come on, let's be honest. You can be saved and full of a whole lot of stuff. You can be saved, but all you want is to get some folks back. And this word comes to say, God is able to do for you what he did for Joseph. He is able to do for me what he did for Joseph, which is to say, I am so blessed until I don't have to worry about what happened in my past because God has so overwhelmed that hurt. Hey, he has so overwhelmed those experiences until he's taken the oppression out of the pain and he has taken all of the anger out of my heart and he has given me hope and a future. And now I can think back on what happened without having oppression of pain attached to it, and I can know that those were just stepping stones to my destiny. That's a work of God. That's a work God can and will do in our lives if we'll let him. You see, if you don't get to that place, when you're focused on your pain and your anger and your bitterness and your resentment and your desire for vengeance, and what you consider justice, what happens is that ties you to your past. We are called, we are people of destiny. God's taking us somewhere. And you can't get there if you're tied to your past. You're like a dog on a chain wrapped around a tree trunk. You can't move. He can run. He's trying to get somewhere, but he keeps being pulled back. 
You ever live like that? You ever see something you want to get, but you keep being pulled every time you go for it. You're, you're pulled back. Why? Because you're tied to something that is behind you. I'm here to let somebody know God wants to break the chain. I said God wants to break the chain. God wants to set you free. God wants to get you to a place where you're not jerking back. I really want to get somewhere in my life, but I keep being pulled back. I wish I could get free. God says, I'm a chain breaker. I'm a chain breaker. I know how to get you free from what's tying you down. But in order to get there, you're going to have to do what Joseph did. See, Joseph couldn't name this child Manasseh as a true testimony of what God uh, did in his life unless he was cooperating with God. And as you notice throughout the story, you see the phrase, but the Lord was with Joseph. When he got sold into Egypt, when soon as you get to chapter 39, where he now arrives in Egypt as a common slave, the Bible says he was purchased by Potiphar and became a slave in Potiphar's house, but the Lord was with Joseph. What does that mean? That suggests that Joseph is practicing the presence of God rather than rehearsing the pain and the bitterness about his brothers. It means he's practicing. He's thinking about God. He's not thinking about his brother. He's not walking around the house every day as a slave saying, if I ever see those jokers again, oh, I tell you what, if I ever get out of here and get back to Canaan, oh, it's on. You'll never get Manasseh nursing that kind of attitude. He, the, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. Then later on, as the Lord prospered him as a slave and Mrs. Potiphar tried to hit on him and he rejected uh, her, then she cried attempted rape and had him thrown into prison. But when he gets to prison, you see it again. But the Lord was with Joseph. He not down in jail saying, oh, if we ever have a jail break. Oh, I tell you what, if we ever bust out of here, First place I'm going is to Potiphar's house. I'm going to wring that woman's neck. I'm going to kill her. No, he's not rehearsing the junk. He's rehearsing the goodness of God. He's saying, Lord, I believe you even though I don't like where I am. I believe you as a slave. I believe you as a jailbird. I'm just believing that you've begun something good in me, and you're not going to let these people determine my destiny. I'm believing that you're not letting them, Lord, write the chapter, the the end of of, of my uh, story. Yes, there are a chapter in it, and I'm believing you to shake the pain and the oppressiveness out of it, and I'm believing that there's coming another chapter. See, that's what you got to believe. You got to believe that those people who have done you wrong aren't writing the story of your life. You got to make up in your mind, if God is at work in me, then all you are is a character in the play. You're just a character. That's all you are. You just, you just have a role. You're just supporting actor, supporting actress in the story that God is writing to give himself glory through my life. And so, yes, this is a dark uh, chapter in the story. No doubt about it. I'm not in denial. Yes, you did me wrong. No, I don't like it. But the fact of the matter is my God is greater than what you did. See, that's what he's doing when he's testifying uh, that uh, the Lord made him forget all his trouble. He is saying, yes, I had trouble, but because God is greater than my trouble, I don't even have to focus on how painful it was. For all practical purposes, I've now forgotten. And I want to let you know God wants to get us there. But it takes practicing his presence rather than practicing the junk. Some of us, the only thing we rehearse is our anger, our bitterness. The only thing we rehearse is the junk, the venom, the vengeance. All, all we rehearse is, uh-uh, see, you don't do me like that. Uh-uh, see, you don't know my people. We not like that. We don't play that. See, as long as you rehearse that, you're tied to that tree. And you can't get anywhere. Keep trying to move in your life and you keep being pulled back. You're tied to that tree. But as soon as you say, Lord... I'm just believing that though my trouble was great, my God is greater. My pain was great, but my God is greater. What I went through was great, but my God is greater. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And he named this child, and in so doing, he testified that God caused me to forget 
all my trouble in my father's household. Then he testified a second time when he named his second child. He named that child Ephraim. That means fruitful. And look at Joseph's explanation. He said, the Lord has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. You see, sometimes we think the key to getting where we want to get, get to in life is a complete change. I need a change of scenery. I need a whole new life. I need to pick up and move and go somewhere. I need to start fresh. You need to understand if you did that and that, was, that change uh, resulted in good things in your life, you're not going to be inclined to give God the glory because you think the key to your success was the change of your location or the change of your circumstances. This is a testimony that says God decided to bless me right in the place where I suffered. This is a testimony that says I don't have to move to be blessed. I don't have to have some drastic shift in my circumstances to be blessed. God can command a blessing right down into the midst of the place where I suffered. And I want to let you know, for some of us, that is the way God's going to bless us. He's not going to bless you by letting you pick up and relocate because you know what? If we don't learn the right lessons and don't learn how to put our trust in God, if you pick up and go somewhere, you're going to take the same lack of faith and trust in God and drop it off at the new location. So God said, no, the key for you is not a change of address. The key for you is not a change of career. The key for you is not a change of spouse. Help us, Jesus. If I can just get rid of this one, I believe a blessing will come my way. God says, no, because if you do that and don't understand who I am and don't let me play the, uh, bring you out into a place where you magnify me, all you'll do is take your same junk and plop it down in a new relationship. So God says through Joseph's naming of this second child, I'm able to bless you in the same place where you suffered. Same location. The only difference is I show up and I command a blessing right where you suffer. Joseph, here's where you were a slave. Here's where life took you awfully low. Here's where you spent years in jail for a crime you didn't commit. Here's where you went through some awful changes. But right here is now where I'm blessing you. Blessings coming and going. Goodness and mercy following you every day of your life. Now the Lord has brought you out into a high place and you're giving him all the glory. That's what God wants to do in your life and mine right in the place where we suffered. God wants to show you, you don't need a new job, you need my blessings on the job you have. You don't need a new marriage, I can, I can give you a new marriage with the same spouse. You don't need to hurry up and get your kids out your house. I can bless you with terrible twos running around. I can bless you with, with preteens running around. I can bless you, look, watch this, I can bless you with teenagers in your house. God says, I don't have to change your circumstance. I can command the blessing right where you are, in the land of your suffering in the place where it was so hard, you didn't at times think you would be able to make it. Joseph said, he made me fruitful. When I got here, it looked awfully barren. When I got here, it looked like all my promise was in Canaan. It looked like my brothers robbed me of the ability to be blessed because they moved me away from the place where I thought I'd be blessed. But now I see that the blessing doesn't have a geographic location. 
Now I see that the blessing has to do with my vertical relationship with God. That I can be where I'd rather not be, but if the Lord is with me there, he can command the blessing where I wish I was not. Look at how great this is. Joseph would have never seen the hand of God had he stayed in his comfortable environment in Canaan. Sometimes God has to move you out of comfort to show you how great he is. Sometimes he has to move you out of a place where Joseph was spoiled and his father was always taking care of him. He would have never learned about his God until he got to a place where he desperately needed to hold on to God. Years ago, decades ago, Andre Crouch wrote that song that said, through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. Through it all, I learned to depend upon his word. There's one part in the song where he said, I thank God for my uh, valleys. I thank God for the things he brought me through. He said, because if I never experienced those, I would have never known what his grace could do. I want to let you know that God sometimes takes us to a place where there's a season of suffering so that when he brings us out, he'll bring us out right in the land where we suffer so that we understand and we testify to everybody. It's not about where I am. It's about the God I serve. Now, one final note. One final note that's very important. Look at the order of the naming of these children. First is forgetful, then fruitful. You will never be fruitful until you are willing to let God make you forgetful. You will never experience destiny until you let God release you from the chains that tie you to the past. First must come forgetful. He couldn't name the first kid Ephraim. You can't be fruitful until you've been released. Fruitfulness has to do with your future, moving into your destiny. In Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to do you good and not harm. Plans to give you hope in a future. You'll never get to your hope in your future. You'll never see the hand of God until you let him release you from the past. Sometimes the enemy tells you, I've got to hold on to this pain. I've got to hold on to this bitterness. I've got to hold on to this anger. It's all I have. And you clutch it like some sort of, uh, of blanket that you need, some security blanket, and you clutch it. And what you don't realize is that you're clutching your spiritual death. You're clutching that will, which will never let you experience what God has for you. What you're holding on to is the very thing that's keeping you bound. And so first we have to say, Lord, I give you full permission to release me from the oppressive pain. Release me from my preoccupation with people. Release me from my anger over the way I was raised. Release me from those people who did me wrong. Release me from that job that seems to be going nowhere and I'm mad at the bosses and supervisors and, and everybody. I need to be released, Lord. If you're going to get me into my future, I need to say goodbye to my past. God, give me that grace that allows me to forget. And that happens when we, like Joseph, practice his presence rather than rehearsing our troubles. And if you'll let him, the Lord will give you a Manasseh. He'll give you the ability to forget. Oh, you remember because you can't testify if you have amnesia. You'll remember, yes, they did it. And later on in this story, we're going to see not only does Joseph remember what his brothers did, but years from now, when they show up because the famine has hit Canaan and they come to Egypt looking for food and they bow before a man they don't even know is the brother that they sold into slavery, it's going to be extremely important that Joseph forgot. 
You see what's happening? God will not put your enemies at your feet until you have grace not to step on them. Because when it's all said and done, God's agenda is not for you to get your vengeance. Well, I hope you were blessed and helped by the word you received today. Now, this message is entitled, It's Time to Testify. This message, as well as all of my daily broadcasts, can be heard 24 hours a day online simply by visiting my website, pastorpaul.net. You can even download them to your iPhone, Galaxy, or other smart device. In addition, you can browse our complete online store. Simply visit my website, pastorpaul.net. Before we go, let me say thank you to those of you who make these broadcasts possible by your faithful prayers and generous support. You're the lifeline of this media ministry, and we're grateful to God for you. And for all who get in touch with us this month with your gift of any amount, I'd like to send you my latest booklet entitled Preparing for Takeoff. In Romans chapter 12, the Apostle Paul says that it's God's plan for us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And in this booklet, I draw lessons from the process of metamorphosis and apply those lessons to our spiritual growth. I'm sure you'll be blessed by these insights and I'd love to send you a copy of Preparing for Takeoff when you donate this month to help us continue reaching people everywhere through this broadcast ministry. Our mailing address is Destined for Victory, P.O. Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. Once again, that's Destined for Victory, P.O. Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. Or you can call us toll-free at 855-339-5500. That's 855-339-5500. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Well, thanks for joining us today. I hope you'll tune in again next time and invite someone you know to tune in as well. Most of all, remember that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In Christ, you are destined for victory.